Hey guys, how's it going? Thanks for checking back in to Gulch Hay Farms. My name's Dane, that's Matthew, and we're finally finishing the big behemoth of our tractor barn today. So, at the end of this video, you'll see the finished product, and we're gonna go over uh, what this thing cost me to put up. Again, this is something that me and my cousin Matt have done uh, by ourselves with the help of my dad and a few other friends. Uh, so I'm gonna try to include every single penny that I've included, plus or minus, you know, a dollar or two. Um, but I'll have everything from uh, the tin to the purlin to the beams to the pipe, all of the materials, uh, everything I bought, supplies. My, my wife's got a decent spreadsheet to show you, so uh, I just wanted to kind of have that breakdown for y'all, just so y'all, if y'all feel like y'all, this is something y'all can handle and y'all want to do, uh, you at least know, must even know how much it's going to cost. But uh, before we get into uh, finishing the building and breaking down the cost of this thing, uh, go ahead and give us that big old thumbs up. We really appreciate it, and it helps us tremendously. So, uh, guys, thanks. Give us a thumbs up. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I promise you'll like the channel. All done? Yeah. Like this, because of that, I will could put that looking up. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So right now, Matthew just got done cutting our two foot sections and we're going to do the front. That's why we have that purlin hanging down about two feet. These are two foot sections and we're going to get up there and uh, with the basket thing right here, once my dad gets here, me and Matthew will get up there and start screwing them down. But I will finish the front apron and then we're going to start hanging trim. Um, we have these last three sheets to get on and I screwed up and missed the pickup delivery yesterday. I missed it by 12 minutes. They closed at 5, but pickup, latest pickup was 4.30, and I missed it. So we're going to actually, I actually ended up having three extra, more than three extra sheets. I actually need six, make sure I have six. But uh, 11 footers, and I'm just going to stack them on that side and just get this thing done. And then I'll pick up those three sheets and have three extras whenever that day comes. Yeah, it looks like I have enough. Let's see. Plenty. I don't know why I ordered so many, but we got plenty. And then once we once we complete this front apron, we're gonna start hanging the trim. Um, and we got the high side rake trim for the front, and then we got the rake trim for the sides and then the corners. We're gonna figure out how to trim the corners and then we are going to be done. Done. So hopefully Matthew's last day out here. I could quit dragging him out here. So anyway. About done with this front apron and uh, we're actually gonna go ahead and start trimming this sheet we probably should have trimmed it before we put it up there but we're gonna trim it now and then um, we're gonna actually go ahead and put trim after we finish that we're gonna go ahead and put trim on all the edges so it'll look nice and cleaned up
looking real good. All that's left is the trim. What you think, Bubba? You want to get some toys? Let's see what we have with us. Oh, look over there is your backhoe. You see your backhoe? Here it is. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's the one. Hey guys, welcome back. I know we were going to try to show getting this trim up, but uh, it ended up getting real nasty that day. So obviously a few days later, it's nice and beautiful 77 here in Texas. Um, yeah, it ended up misting and getting super nasty. It never really amounted to any kind of rain, but it was just, I mean, we were, it was hot and muggy and I was up on the lift and it was just really hard to get going on the film. But uh, needless to say, we did get all of the trim up all the way around. Uh, notice the corner trim on the poles. We did get corner trim on the back, corner trim on the back. And then obviously the front trim here. It actually trimmed out real nice here. I was pretty pleased. I wasn't sure how this corner trim was going to work around these pipes, but it ended up working really well. And then obviously we got our sheets up and uh, the rake trim hung over here. As I said in the beginning of the video, I kind of wanted to give you a breakdown of uh, how much everything costs. But before I do that, um, I need to sit in front of the computer. I have all the figures typed up. I say I and my wife, Heather. She's awesome and kept track of it all. So we have it broke down based on like materials bought um, and certain expenses that we've incurred through the process of building this thing. One second, my wife's calling. Hello? Hey. All right. There we go. Anyway. So yeah, the spreadsheet has a, a breakdown of all the materials and cost and, you know, cost that we've incurred while putting this thing up, tools bought. Uh, even down to like skid steer rental and things of the nature and so um, before I reveal all those numbers I kind of wanted to give you a breakdown of materials used and uh, what we did uh, how we put the building up um, and I might try to show little snippets of footage that we've gathered during the process of doing all of this and so I will preface this whole uh, this entire explanation of this building by saying that I spent Quite a few hours designing this on the computer. I am kind of what somewhat savvy in uh, AutoCAD computer drafting, whatever. And uh, so I was able to put a drawing together and basically put the drawing together to the best of my knowledge based on the materials I wanted to use. Uh, by no means am I a professional when it comes to putting these things up, but I felt like I have enough background to put these to, you know, to know what size the materials actually are and and, and those things that I've learned over the years, I was able to kind of piece it together. And really, I mean, we really didn't run into many hiccups, but it just goes to show that I'm super glad that I put in all the preparation to design this job, this building here. The gist of it is uh, in all of the corners and on 20 foot spans are five inch pipe. Uh, I bought these, they, they were five inch by 42 feet in length and i bought seven of them and thank goodness we did uh because mid build i just changed the design to a lean-to style versus a gable and yes we were going to build a gable but instead we decided to do a lean-to style um technically it should have taken six 42 footers each one um could be 21 feet and then of course we went around and chopped the tops off based on uh the height and pitch we were trying to achieve um, this is just under, actually just under a 1 on 12 pitch because of my design change. We had to make it work with the height we were had already set. So I changed the design after we set the poles. It was kind of dumb, but I'm glad we went this route. The building turned out way better, I think, personally. Each pipe is in the ground about 4 feet with concrete, with about 4 or 5 bags of concrete. We ended up using a 250-gallon uh, water tote with a 12-volt DC garden hose pump on it to mix a concrete. Uh, we didn't mix it in wheelbarrow or anything. We just kind of dry set the poles with the concrete in the bag and then uh, sprayed water in it and mixed it up as much as we could accordingly. It set rock hard. It was perfect. Very pleased with it. Hey, where are you going? You want to stay over here or you want to go to the shop? Stay over here. Yeah, very pleased with uh, how well the uh, concrete set. Um, 
one thing I will say, it was very imperative and we're really glad we paid so much detail and attention to how accurately we set these posts. I think only one of them was like a sixteenth of an inch off and you could actually see it in the building, but we were able to make some corrections as we uh, hung the iron. Yeah, so that's pretty much it for all of the post information. Again, they were five inch posts, 42 foot long. We cut them to length, set them in the ground. And then once they were in the ground, cause they all don't set, you can't dig a hole perfectly and set them to the perfect height unless you're like a magician. And so what we did was we took the transit or the level, the long range level, uh, looked through it and then marked all the poles where that level was set up. And then that was our reference point for the rest of the job. And as a matter of fact, some of these lines are still here. This chalk line, this soapstone here, right here is uh is the level mark and so if you look down you can see that if you can see i don't know if it'll pick up in the camera but they're actually still showing up on all the posts so if you look straight down this line to the next one they'll be perfectly level and so then we can go around and mark the different heights for each of the poles that's pretty much it for the poles that's that's kind of what we did um you know we use string lines and pins to get the building square and the measurements we want and then we just get bait basically use those string lines to set the poles as accurately as possible Let's talk about the I-beams, all right? So remember, I designed this building originally to be gabled. So I went ahead and went out and bought the appropriate I-beam to gable this building. Well, after we set the poles, we decided to go to a lean-to. Well, in turn, I had to get actually heavier I-beam, and so I have a bunch of I-beams sitting around right now. Don't worry, I have a use for it. We are gonna use it, and it's probably gonna be off the front of this building, but that's for another story. There's a few things that we, I wouldn't say did wrong, but there are things that I would change as far as the layout of the building. Um, instead of measuring from this edge of the pipe to the other edge of the pipe being 40 feet, we used the centers of the poles as our measurements. So that means the center of this pole to the center of that pole over there is actually 40 feet. Well, what that did was made these trusses or these beams or whatever you want to call them actually longer than 40 feet it made it 40 foot six inch six and five sixteenths of an inch uh so basically what i'm getting at is i had to go and buy 50 foot i-beams rather than getting away with 40 foot i-beams so there was extra cost incurred there don't worry we already have a use uh for the extra 10 foot almost 10 foot that we had to lob off so anyway, I went and bought 50 foot I-beams. Uh, the three center I-beams are 12 inch I-beams. They're 12 inch by 19 pound per foot I-beams. That's how they rate I-beams, the amount of weight per foot. Uh, and then the height of the I-beam, they're all four inches wide. So 12 inches by four inches in dimension. This is 19 pounds per foot. And then the two edge ones are 10 inch by 15 pound I-beams. And when you think about that, so when we go to lob the tops of these poles off after we get our level marks and figure out we had to add an extra two inches to each pole measurement just because the I-beams are um, not as tall as the center ones. Um, and the reason we were able to get away with that was because the pole in the center, right? So there's a support pole. Technically, we probably could have got away with an eight inch I-beam, but uh, 10 inch sounds better, I guess. I went and picked them up at the, at the steel yard, uh, took them to Matthews, and um, we actually built all of the trusses, all of the flanges, uh, all of that at uh, Matthew's house. And so we were able to lob off the correct pitch um, and then go ahead and every four feet add a quarter inch by four inch straps. And I don't know if you can zoom in on that or not. I'll try. Uh, four inch uh, strap essentially is what it is. Uh, cut to length, cut to six inch length, six inches in length, and that's what gave us a welding surface to tie these purlins onto. And so once uh, once the trusses were completed, that was really easy. I mean, it's really just really trying to be consistent with our measurements and making sure that these purlins were going to lie lie straight when we hung them. So as you look down, I mean, they're pew, 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 perfect. Once we finished up trusses, uh, it was time to hang them. And so uh, using the same line that we marked initially, actually we marked it that day that we hung trusses, but using this line, we figured out what our measurements were for the three centers and the two edge beams. Marked them. Um, Matthew created a template for the slope off of the pipe. And it was only, I wanna say it was like three eighths of an inch. Like it, it wasn't even, there was a between a quarter and three eighths of an inch difference slope from the front of the pipe to the back of the pipe on each of them. So, 
not a, not a huge deal, but we still made a template and marked it and then he was able to cut it with a torch. Lobbed off the, all the tops and then it was time to hang them. We did use a uh, John Deere 317G skid steer. I was a little worried that that skid steer did not have enough hiney in it to hit, manhandle those beams with the boom that we were using. Uh, but it did perfectly. I mean, it was perfect. Uh, it was a great tool to hang those beams precisely. Uh, we were able to hang all five of these beams in... I would say three hours so uh you know with that being said it, it, it couldn't have gone any better you know matthew was able to score the little jib boom that hooks onto uh any you know like standard forks for a uh, skid steer and uh that was a huge tool uh it was imperative that we had it actually that skid steer wouldn't have lifted high enough but it was about an eight foot extension that got us uh then enough height to uh raise these beams on top of these uh, poles really once once the once the uh, Once we got the beams on top of the poles Matt was on a 14 foot ladder or 12 foot ladder and just tacked them got them in place And then uh, he spent the majority of the time after we got them all placed just welding them up real good uh, You know making sure there's no holes so water can get down in them um, After that uh, we did tie in the purlins uh, each of the purlins uh, are 8 inch by two and a half inch uh, purlin by 20 feet uh, it is Mexican steel it's not US made steel I was a little worried that the uh, measurements were going to be off on the uh, Mexican steel but uh, they were dead on eight inches by two and a half inches and they were cut perfectly to 20 foot and so with our measurements being on 20 foot centers for all of these pipes when we threw the purlins up there we had didn't have to do any cutting or anything we just picked them up and set them on the high beams and welded them all the way around and so that I mean we did that in one Sunday morning We had all of these 44 I believe purlins up. So the purlins are up uh, next step was Welding the clips out for the wall girts. I used six inch by two inch by 20 foot wall girts We did have to chop every single one of those Approximately five inches uh, just because of the inside of the, the pipe dimensions. So here's what we did um, We took flat steel um, this is the same, this is the same material that we used for the purlins, but, uh, we used just a piece of pipe that we had cut off from these poles and we made a jig. And so we took, you know, basically made three inch sections and every cut was a rounded cut. And so it was, you know, set up perfectly to, uh, make a single cut to make a single clip. And, uh, you're able to knock those out in no time with a, with a cutting torch. So once the uh, clips are on, we went around and, you know, using the same level line that we had created initially, uh, we figured out where we wanted to set the purlins. We put the clip there, welded it real good. And um, then, all you know, once we have those set, all we had to do was take a six inch, take that purlin or girt, wall girt and set it on the clips that we welded. And then we just had to go around using a square and make sure that, uh, just to make sure that, you know the the, uh, the wall girts were in line with uh, how we wanted the tin to lie essentially so uh, yeah that's pretty much it for all of the uh, wall purlins or wall girts and the purlins um, and then it came to hanging tin I pre-ordered all my tin based on lengths that I measured out on the computer program that I used uh, everything worked perfectly um, it was real simple that was probably the most expensive part of all the material was the actual tin versus the actual structure components. Um, you can get them measured in any length up to, you know, within an inch in increments. Um, and so uh, I had a, me and Matthew and a buddy, and we roofed it all in one day. And we also actually got achieved, uh, we got the back done, and the back went up in like 30 minutes. It was awesome. So it was uh, 54 sheets by of uh, 21 footers on the roof and then there was 27 sheets of 11 footers on the back and then we used um, I think it's 13 sheets of 14 footers on the sides each so 27 total um, building a 40 by 80 actually a lot of the measurements come out to be the same all the way across it's pretty cool that when you see um, so really ordering materials is really easy um, but yeah hanging the tin was pretty straightforward I had another buddy out for that um, and you know these these are a little time consuming these side panels because of having to cut the uh, pitch you know so it slowed you down a little not too terribly but um, so yeah we really enjoyed doing 
that and then of course we use like 2500 screws probably put too many on the roof but the son of a gun's not gonna go anywhere and then uh yesterday or uh, it was two days ago from this video that i'm recording that we put the the uh the trim up and so um we just ordered the trim it comes in 10 foot sticks you just kind of measure out your trim um it ended up working out perfect um i really like how it shook out and here's the good view of it here's the front um we did do a two foot drop so that was uh i'm glad we did it it really dressed it up and then here's the side rake trim and so that's kind of the gist of how we put this building together uh again there were some things i would change but for the most part it really went together really smoothly we didn't really run into any hiccups and the only real thing that really slowed us down was digging them dead gum holes man uh it took us a full day a full weekend to set to dig the holes and set the posts and it should have taken one day period but uh you live and you learn if we would have had a skid steer we used a three-point tractor auger and if you know anything about those they don't have any down pressure so literally in hard ground the 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 auger just kind of skips and doesn't get anywhere and so we actually ended up having to pour water into the hole we tried to dig to loosen up the ground and once we did that we, we rock and rolled but it i mean it took us all day to dig those holes and so uh knowing that i would use a skid steer with some down pressure and uh, you really get those holes dug nicely and that's pretty much it everything else like i said went together really smoothly the trusses went up nicely uh all of the purlins and uh wall girts went up really quick uh the tin really wasn't terrible it's just a lot of bending over especially for the roof and then having i mean it is a more than a two-man job every time every time we were out here putting this up we've had more than two people uh very rarely was it uh just me and matthew um so i appreciate all you who came out and helped me much appreciated especially matthew um, but anyway, so yeah, that's the gist of the building. Uh, not much to it um, after doing it. At, at first it was like, I don't know what if I bit off more than I can chew, but I'm glad I got jumped into it. And uh, I'm glad, glad I was able to learn during the process. Um, so yeah, now that we, we kind of explained uh, the process here, I'm gonna go jump over to the home computer where I have all, these inf all this information jotted down and I will go over those numbers with you so you have an idea of how much this costs. See you in a bit. Hey guys, uh, a few days later, um, I know I went over the construction of the barn and kind of like the materials used um, and kind of gave you a gist of how we put it together. Uh, overall, I really wouldn't change a whole lot other than the size of the barn and, uh, you know, you know, I would have liked to have a little bit better of equipment digging the post holes, but, uh, you know, we we made do with what we had. But other than that, I mean, here's here's a view of it from here. We're inside my other shop. And that is the equipment barn from here. I know it's kind of far. I'll try to zoom in on it. But uh, more than happy with how it turned out. And so I just wanted to go over a few of uh, the costs of things. And, and my wife's been keeping pretty good track of all of this. Um, mind you, while I'm making this video, uh, metal has jumped. Not significantly, but it has jumped uh, since we have purchased all of this steel. So uh, pricing for the actual metals and things of the nature aren't going to exactly be accurate. Uh, it's been about like an 11% jump. So anyway, uh, a few things. Uh, let, let's just start off uh, from Ashley Salvage Company. Uh, they're a vendor here in town. Um, we bought uh, pipe and purlin from them and we spent uh, for exactly $4,784. So that included the six inch purlin, the eight inch purlin and the pipe. Um, next expense was uh, from Home Depot. We bought a few tools and things, uh, but the concrete was the main one. Between the tools and concrete, that, like that 12-foot ladder right there, that's one thing we spent. And then, of course, all the uh, 60 bags of concrete. That was $521.67. We did include the skid steer rental on this, uh, as you showed, or as I showed earlier when hanging the trusses. That was a skid steer we rented. Um, we spent $1,300.34 on that. Um, that was a huge deal, but you know, that also included doing this entire road, scraping up all the dirt, getting all the base filled. Surprise! 
they work started working on our house so that's cool but yeah that included you know putting the roads in and the base all the way over there so not only did we get to put up a building with it but we also were able to uh lay the gravel pad and all that down um the next purchase were the actual trusses themselves um and then miscellaneous metal like uh quarter inch steel for all the uh the, the uh straps or the tabs that you would weld the purlin in the, in the in the trusses to or or the purlin on top of the trusses uh total there was 2500 so 2518 dollars and 59 cents um and that was again for the i-beam i-beam and, and miscellaneous steel used to put that together um the big expense was the tin and that was five thousand six hundred thirty seven dollars and six cents and that is what has jumped tremendously that's probably more than eleven percent uh but yeah that's what we spent five thousand six hundred thirty seven dollars and six cents on trim so that include i mean i'm sorry on tin so that includes everything from the roof the front brow and the sides and the back um, and then i have a separate invoice here for uh trim the trim was seven hundred one dollars and seventy eight cents and that included screws as well uh, so that is the high side rake trim the rake trim on the sides and the outside corner trim to uh, wrap the corners up and so there were some other expenses in there but i only really wanted to touch on those primarily uh, because that is the actual cost of materials uh, you know there's money in there i paid a couple buddies who came and helped me uh, obviously matthew was a huge help in this um, and he, uh, we, we ended up compensating him pretty well. Um, I don't feel like that's needs to be part of this equation. And so anyway, I just wanted to touch on like the actual cost to put this building up. So with all that being said, um, just including the amounts and big time tool purchases and or rentals that we had to pay for to get this building up in the air. The grand total of this building, an 80 by 40, 14 foot clearance on the front, 11 foot clearance on the back, was $15,463. Yeah, there are added costs. I think total all in all with everything we have from paying our friends and you know things here and there, we're probably in this thing closer to 18 or 19,000. But uh, I don't have an exact figure on that. But anyway, that gives you an idea of how much this building cost me to put up in materials and tools alone so anyway i appreciate you guys watching comment below if you think i missed anything um again that was just kind of covering the gist of it but i hope you enjoyed please like comment subscribe if you're new here um we also plan on doing a walkthrough on what it costs to put this building up and grant remember i didn't do this one and to finish out the inside here electricals going in all that fun stuff but anyway Look forward to that video. In the meantime, y'all take care. Gold Shave Farms loves you. We'll see you on the next one. Take care.